Hello everybody, my name is Aaron Customs and I've been following the debate on uh, human evolution, uh, especially with regard to uh, our similarity with the, the apes and uh, the indisputable fact that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes and that uh, certainly monk, chimpanzees, uh, orangutans, gorillas and other apes have uh, 24 pairs of chromosomes and it's, uh, it's widely discussed and there's a point back in history it seems where monkey chromosomes, chimpanzee or our common ancestor chromosomes 2 and 3 fused together to produce uh, our chromosome number 2 so in that way we went from having 24 pairs of chromosomes to 23 chromosomes by the uh, fusion of um, chromosome 2 and 3 now this is something that um, that I've been thinking about an awful lot and what I'm going to say now is is something that I would invite anyone to respond to uh, especially if they, they have um, uh, genetics experience if they've got uh, a PhD perhaps in uh, genetics or human genetics or ancestral genetics anything because uh, I can't see how uh, this could have occurred um, and given rise to the human race as we have it so I'm going to set up my argument here and uh, I hope that you'll have time to listen to it because uh, it, the, the results of uh, this thinking uh, really made me, uh, it gave me the creeps actually to, to be frank. So here we go. First of all, what is the chance of a telomere telomere mutation uh, occurring, a viable telomere telomere um, mutation occurring? That is what's happened as it can be shown uh, to our ancestors chromosomes number two and three uh, to produce our chromosome number two. So what's the chances of that happening? Now given that that has happened in a cell and given that we're looking at uh, producing new individuals we're looking at this mutation happening in meiosis uh, in the production of egg and sperm. So what's the chances of that mutation occurring and producing a viable sperm? That's the first. Well, that's the second question. Actually, the first one was, uh, what's the chance of that mutation actually uh, occurring and being stable? Uh, so no reversal on it. So what's the chances of that producing a viable sperm? I would say the answer to the first one is that it's pretty small chance of that mutation occurring at all. Um, perhaps in the hundreds of thousands to one. I'm guessing. Perhaps um, geneticists can put me right. And what's the chances of that mutation producing a viable sperm? So if the mutation's there. Oh, that doesn't affect the mechanics of the sperm, as I understand it, so there's a fair chance that that mutation, although it's a very unlikely mutation, um, can produce a, a, a viable sperm. Now, say you have that, um, that individual sperm with that uh, telomere telomere mutation in, what's the chances of that ejaculation containing that sperm uh, fertilizing a female? So how many ejaculations uh, do you imagine that um, these uh, ancient uh, ancestors of ours had that actually were into females who were uh, ovulating at the time? I would say that's quite a small number. I don't know uh, whether they were <laughs> big on masturbation, but um, I would say that uh, it was probably a small chance uh, that that was actually, that fertilization would take place, uh, or the, the actual, um, you know, the that that ejaculation containing that sperm would have ended up in a female. Now, it doesn't only have to end up in a female, it has to end up in a female uh, that has a similar mutation on an egg. So what is the chances of that fertilization being on a viable egg, or to a viable egg, that has got an identical telomere, telomere uh, mutation on the same chromosome? So it's already a very small chance that we've got a, 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 a viable sperm with that exact mutation uh, entering a female. Uh, and what is the chances in addition to that, or multiplied on that, of the female having exactly the same mutation, so chromosomes 2 and 3 of our uh, common ancestors with chimpanzees and the rest, um, giving rise to the, the viable egg and being fertilized by that same telomere telomere mutation from a male. I'm sorry to keep repeating myself here, but I want to make it absolutely clear. I don't want you to have to look at the video twice. 
So I would I would assert that uh, the chances of that happening are enormously small, enormously small. Uh, now, say that fertilization did take place. So for the first time, we've got a, a possibly viable uh, 46 chromosomed uh, zygote produced. Now, what is the chances at all of a zygote uh, or early embryo actually implanting in the womb? Uh, that's reasonably fair, as we know. Now, what's the chances of this unusual uh, embryo uh, developing normally and producing a fertile, functional offspring? I would say that that is pretty small. It's pretty small. It's, uh, in my knowledge, uh, more than likely that uh, the offspring would be dysfunctional in some way um, with this chromosomal aberration. And being fertile, uh, well, being fertile would only make sense, which is another part of my argument, it would only make sense if it was fertile, if the individual was fertile and had another 46 chromosomed individual to produce offspring with. So, another multiplier in our probabilities or unlikelihoods is what is the chances of a viable 46 chromosomed individual, uh, as I've described, incredibly unlikely that they would exist in the first place, what's the chances of them discovering at the same time and place uh, within, uh, at, at reproductive age, a individual of the opposite sex who's got the, the same infinitesimally unlike, well, incredibly unlikely uh, set of mutations um, giving rise to their own uh, uh, chromosome condition.